Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range, talk about the XCR from Robinson Armament. Many years ago, I did a video on a flat dark earth 5.56 rifle, and I did one on the 308. And uh, I had a few problems with the rifle, and uh, I never really finished out that series. Uh, sent the rifle back, and for a few years, I mean, I've always been in love with the design of the gun, but I just didn't talk about it. But on our way out to Wyoming to do a prey dog hunt recently, we went by our friends over at Brown Ells. They had one of these there. Uh, they hooked a brother up with some uh, really good pricing, let's say, and I picked up an XCR. And this is a current production gun. And uh, I was really excited to get my hands on one because I really wanted to give it a second chance because again, I've always been really interested in this gun for a couple of reasons. First of all, this gun was designed to compete in the SCAR trials. Now, if you watch a really in-depth video about these rifles over at Small Arms Solutions, they're right here on YouTube. Uh, he goes into great detail about the development of this rifle, but it was designed to compete in the SCAR program. It was disqualified for a silly reason. They forgot to send a blank firing attachment with the, with the gun when they submitted it to the trials, and the military is very unforgiving, even for silly things like that, and it was kicked out of the trials before it could even take part in the trials, which I think was unfortunate because had this gun gone on to, uh, to further development, to become a military weapon potentially, I think it has a lot of promise, more so than the SCAR itself. So we'll get into that here in this video, but what I thought was interesting is so I picked the gun up, I had an extra optic in case I had a failure while we were out in Wyoming, so I slapped it on the gun. We really roughly zeroed it, uh, shooting at rocks off the back deck of our, uh, of our ranch that we were sit staying at, and I got several kills with this rifle just running some regular old Federal 223 55 grain ball. And so, uh, it was fun. We shot a lot of ammunition while we were out there. We were on the ground shooting for over four days, and uh, we shot a lot of ammunition, shot at a lot of dogs at pretty good distance, and I had a, a great time with the rifle. So today I'm just going to show you the rifle, break it down, show you what I love about the gun, and I'm going to keep shooting it, and then in the future we're going to go into more detail about the firearm, do a little bit more shooting with it, and tell you what I, I think of the gun after I've gotten several thousand rounds through it. And you'll see it pop up here and there in, in videos coming up down the road. So let's go ahead and load it up. I have some uh, OK Industries Surefeed magazines. You can find these over at Copper Custom. And uh, I've, I've really been using these a lot. I like the magazines. I like P-Mags, I like Lancers. These are military contract magazines. These were being used in the military when I was in back in the late 80s. And now they have you know updated features and stuff like that. So they're really good magazines. I, I like them quite a bit. And I shoot 20 rounders when I'm shooting off a bench like I am now. So let's, uh, the bolt's already locked to the rear here because I've been shooting it a little bit. And this is a US Optics. Uh, uh, I think, what is it, one and a half? Or 1.8 power all the way up to 10 power. And this also is from Copper Custom. And uh, I really like US Optics. They do a, a nice job on their, on their scopes. Now this one has a mill reticle in it. And that, again, is something that I use, especially on rifles like this where I'm using it for hunting because when you have a lot of windy conditions and stuff like that, prairie dogs will typically give you a second, third, and sometimes fourth chance to actually hit them. Okay, I am on him. Got him on the second one. And so you can see what your miss is using that mill reticle, give it a proper hold, and uh, by the second shot, you're typically on target. All right, so let's just walk this sucker straight out to 200 yards. And again, we're just shooting some 55 grain Federal. Helps if you drop that bolt. Well, that's, I might as well point this out. So the bolt release is uh, ambi. It's on both sides. It's right here in front of the trigger guard. So I was reaching up here for a ping pong paddle, too used to the M16. All right. Such a great shooting gun. This one does have a two port or two chamber muzzle brake on it, uh, but it has no recoil really to mention uh, because of its 556 uh, chambering. It has complete ambi controls, but we'll get into that here in a moment. So, yeah, let's take a closer look at the XCRL for light, meaning it's chambered in 556. 
We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website, and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world, so check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website, and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. Let's take a closer look at what makes the XCR tick. Now, XCR stands for Exchangeable Caliber Rifle. L is a designation for light. That's not in reference to the weight of the gun. It's in reference to the caliber of the firearm, 5.56. So we're going to start off back here at the rear of the gun. Now, the stock's gone through some evolutionary changes, and this would be the most current stock, I believe, out there on the market. It's a very thin metal stock, and it's adjustable. You have a locking screw here, and then you can pinch and slide it to the position that you want. It will lock into whatever position. Then you can tighten that down if you want to. Otherwise, you can even um, take this out if you want, all those little bolt in there that slides around, and then just simply adjust it by pinching it. You don't really need the locking screw. Also, you have a polymer piece here that has two different settings, so you can um, set it down low, or you can set it up higher. And I have it set at its highest setting for, um, for, use with a, for use with an optic. So even with iron sights, I'd probably leave it set right to there. And there's no buttons or anything, it's just a friction fit. The stock also folds to the side, very narrow stock, and locks in the extended position. You have a standard M16A2 pistol grip on here, so you're gonna be able to use different grips that you would like on it. And this gun is truly fully ambidextrous, so that's something that, of course, the military was looking for. So you have a little truncated selector lever over here on the right-hand side of the gun, and then you have a little tiny truncated looking selector lever. It's the same size over on the uh, left-hand side. Now you'll notice from safe to fire, it's only a quarter turn. The gun has a monolithic rail the whole upper receiver is machined from one piece of aluminum and so it is a uh, a very durable upper so you can run optics and force multipliers all the way out without having to worry about handguard shifting this one and there's been different versions of this this one has m-lock i've seen them with key mod and other uh, types of rails over the years but you have m-lock sections there again one solid piece on the upper the gun uh, is very easily taken apart. Here you have a little button that you can hit with your thumb. And all you have to do, instead of pushing a pin like on the M16, is push that forward and it'll hinge right open. Now you can see how small the profile is of the lower receiver. You can see the bolt stop there. And because it doesn't require a uh, extension tube like an M16, that's what gives you the ability to have different stock types. And you can put different stocks on here. Um, and the gun is a true multi-caliber gun where other companies like Bushmaster slash Remington, when they you know, had the ACR on the market, they touted it as being multi-caliber for years. There weren't multi-caliber kits except third-party kits available for it. This thing is available in 6.5 Grendel, 7.62 by 39, 5.56, 6.5 5 Creedmoor, 308, and it goes on and on and on, 224 Valkyrie. Uh, it, they, this is truly a multi-caliber firearm and you can truly get those conversion kits. And we'll talk about how simple it is to, uh, to do that conversion here in a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and close her back up so we can continue talking about the features externally. So we have a standard magazine release right here on the right-hand side of the weapon. And then on the other side, we have an Ambi magazine release as well. You'll also note, again, the bolt stop bolt release is right here underneath the trigger guard. So if you pull up on it and pull the charging handle to the rear, it will lock to the rear, push down, and it drops that bolt and chambers a fresh round. Here's your port buffer. And then on the other side of the rifle, a lot of people are gonna like this, especially right-handed shooters. We have a non-reciprocating charging handle over here. And I really do like that. Being a right-handed shooter, I really like the side charging. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the T-handle, but for ambi purposes, some people like it, left-handed shooters, but as a right-handed shooter, not to pick on my left-handed friends, I like this. Now, the other neat thing about this is um, you can push in on this if the bolt isn't all the way in battery. 
and this is possibly a requirement for the military, you can push in on this and it will lock to the bolt and you can use it as a forward assist to help that bolt home if it needs an extra push. Coming out here, we have the gas tube. We'll show you what that looks like on the inside. And then we have an adjustable gas regulator out here on the end of the barrel. And this one has a 223 wild chamber in it with a one and seven twist. Now, right here on the bottom, this is one single screw with 240 inch pounds of torque that locks the barrel into the gun. So just by loosening this about three turns, you can take the barrel out, slide another barrel in. So if I wanted to convert this to 300 blackout, all I would have to do is loosen this, slide a 300 blackout barrel in, tighten it down. I don't even have to change the bolt head in that case. And now I have a 300 blackout rifle. And yes, the kits do exist. Really simple and easy to use. Does not come loose, at least in my experience so far. All right, so let's break this bad boy down, take a look at the inside. This is where it really intrigues me. So again, we just push that button, hinge it open, and now I can pull the uh, bolt and carrier unit out of the firearm. You're gonna wanna pinch it here because this thing is really simple to take apart. So you'll notice it has a long stroke gas piston in it, and the bolt and carrier just simply pull apart. Talk about simplicity. And this is your recoil spring and guide rod. Very, very simple. The bolt, no pins, just comes right out. How cool is that? Take a look at the locking lugs on this thing. It, it, this, this gun is a totally new gun from the ground up. This isn't some sort of hybrid M16. It's not some sort of hybrid AK. I mean, you could argue that it uses a long stroke gas piston, but um, you know that, that isn't the only gun in the world, AK, that uses such a long stroke gas piston. So really this gun is its own design. I can see very little um, similarities to any other guns that are currently on the market. Now you have a firing pin in here and you have a retaining pin that holds it in place. I'm not going to take it out right now, but basically all you got to do is just pull that pin out and then your firing pin will come right out of that, um, that bolt carrier. So disassembly is insanely simple on the rifle. You do have a push pin in the front to take the upper and lower apart, but for regular maintenance, you don't need to do that. So again, very, very simple and elegant in design, and I just can't get over, and this is what always drew me to the gun, was just how simple the design is and how easy it is to put together. This, if this were in military service, this would be the easiest weapon to claim, AK included. I mean, it's just so simple to take apart and put together. Gosh, that's amazing. So that, that I just showed you really endears me to the design of the gun. It's 100% American in design. It was designed again by Robinson Armament. You may know them for their M96 series of rifles, which was a stoner clone of the uh, M63 uh, rifle, that uh, M63A that, that stoner developed during the Vietnam War. And rumor has it, you can put your name on a waiting list and get your own M96 expeditionary rifle because it looks like they may do another production run of those here soon. And uh, if that's the case, that'll be really cool. I'll have to get one because I have a couple of the older rifles from years ago. <laughs> the gun has a two-stage style trigger to it, which is pretty good. So when you, uh, when you, when you first take up the slack, you'll hit a shelf. The most minute amount of creep and then a pretty clean break. Slightly heavy trigger. It's going to be in the five pound range most likely, but that's exactly where I like the triggers on my rifles like this. So uh, this has a very shootable trigger in it for me. Again, lock the bolt to the rear. Super simple to do. Just put your finger down there. It should work for anybody with any size of hands because it's in such a convenient place. Lock it open and then push back down on it and boom, you're ready to do some shooting. Now I have this stock. I'm going to extend it all the way out because I have a uh, magnified optic on it to get the proper eye relief. And let's uh, 
Let's have some fun with Mr. Challenge target at 150 yards. Such a smooth shooting gun. I really, really like it. Now, what's kind of funny is people look at that ejection port and they think it's not big enough to get a live round out of it, but it actually is. It's just very minimalistic. And when the gun is closed up, you have a very sealed system, even though you don't have a port cover like an M16. So yeah, just the balance of it, the size, the shoulder ability is all just really, really good ergonomics. I think it's a good looking gun. Now you'll notice that a lot of people out there that own them, it's kind of, a, it's kind of like a, a subculture of the gun community. The, the people love these things, the people that own them, and this has been going on for many years. Uh, people just seem to absolutely love their XERs, even you know with the earlier generation guns versus the current generation guns. And so that's uh, something that I find interesting because they are, they're popular, but they're also quite expensive. You're probably looking at around for a brand new one right around 1700 bucks. But um, yeah, that's what you're gonna spend for any quality rifle that's an actually a brand new design like this gun is versus something like an AR-15 that's been in production for you know 60 years by 500 different companies. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, something that uh, is 100% American in design is actually quite ingenious and was designed for a military contract, you might wanna check out the XCR. As I mentioned, the guns are relatively expensive if you're used to buying PSA AR-15s and you know somebody's gonna say inevitably in the comments down below, I could buy five PSAs for what I could buy that rifle for. Well, I guess if you like to collect AR-15s, you want 20 AR-15s, have at it. But some of us like different rifles and this rifle certainly is a different rifle and in a good way. Uh, the gun, I also should point out, has an adjustable gas piston but that has zero through seven settings. And so I will very soon replace this muzzle device uh, with a, probably a standard A2 birdcage and put my Griffin Armament M4 SD2 on there. And then I will tune it through the uh, adjustable gas system to uh, get it set just right. Uh, that or may throw an OSS K can on there. We'll see how that plays out. But overall, I'm been happy with the gun. And I mean, I took this thing right out of the, the box, took it straight out into a dusty, windy environment and shot prairie dogs with it and i've had zero problems with the gun no no malfunctions of any type and uh actually got some dog kills with it so uh yeah i'm gonna keep shooting this gun i'm gonna get a suppressor on it and if you want to pick one of these up you're gonna spend a little bit more you can find them available on the robinson robinson armament website so they are available you can go straight to their website have them uh, ordered to your custom configuration you can pick different colors i think it's 150 bucks don't quote me on that i think 150 bucks if you want to get it cerakoted in flat dark earth green something like that uh, or you can just get it in plain black, which will save you about 150 bucks, I think. And then just have it sent directly to your FFL dealer. Uh, from what I understand, spare parts are now available. I know in the past people have said spare parts have been hard to get. Uh, there are several dealers nationwide that should be stocking those spare parts, or you can go directly to Robinson Armament. All right, guys, that's it for now on this rifle. You will see it again here on the channel. Next time you see it, it probably will have a silencer on it. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you unbiased as humanly possible information, uh, there's only one way we can do that. We're demonetized here on YouTube, and we rely on you, our viewing audience, to support us. And you can do that by following the link in the description below to Patreon and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Also, right here on YouTube, just underneath the video player that you're watching right now, you should see a little join button. Give that join button a click and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support. And we'll talk to you all soon.
Yeah, sweet shooting rifle. Looks good too. Thanks for watching, guys.